So in this video, we're going to be going more over laser dynamics, and we're going to be getting close to completing our treatment uh, of the subject, at least for the small signal uh, linear response. So in the last video, we dealt with the number of photons, and we found an expression uh, for delta n as a function of omega and our photon density. This was just j omega times the change uh, in our number of photons divided by our DC number of photons times our group velocity times our confinement factor uh, multiplied by the derivative of our gain with respect to the carrier density. And so now we need to bring in our second differential equation, or the differential equation in terms of our carrier density. And we wrote this down before. Uh, this is just eta i i over q times our active region volume minus our stimulated emission or our stimulated recombination minus our ABC recombination. And we want this uh, not in terms of the total number of carriers, but in terms of the change in the number of carriers. Uh, so as I apply some small signal excitation to it, and we're applying some small signal current. Uh, and you can follow the arguments in the last video. Uh, it's exactly the same process. Uh, but you'll end up with an equation in terms of now uh, deltas, so delta i over q times the active region volume minus delta r stimulated minus delta r abc. And we figured this one out in the previous video, so we're, I'm not going to belabor that again. Uh, but we need to know what this term is, this delta r abc term. And in particular, we're going to want to linearize this. Uh, because we want all of our differential equations to be linear so that we can solve them and we can get a, fr a meaningful frequency response. Uh, and so let's, let's just write out the ABC recombination rate. We know that it's just some coefficients uh, or some Taylor series expanded up to the cubic term. This is our Shockley-Reed-Hall recombination. This is our spontaneous emission and this is our Auger recombination. Now, uh, if we want to, we no longer want to deal with d n, we want to deal with our DC component and delta n. So we can just blindly plug that in again. So our ABC is just, it's going to be A times n naught plus A times delta n uh, plus B n naught plus delta n squared plus C n naught plus delta n cubed. And you can factor this, but that's not particularly interesting, uh, so I'm going to leave that to you. Uh, but when once you do that, uh, if you ignore everything involving delta n squared and delta n cubed, uh, because these are much smaller uh, than all the other terms, so much smaller than anything involving a delta n, then you'll get that the ABC recombination is just a n naught plus b n naught squared plus c n naught cubed. Uh, and this is our DC, uh, this is our DC term, so our DC ABC recombination, so R ABC naught. Uh, but we're interested in the delta R ABC, so uh, we need to add in our other terms in terms of delta N. And you can you can just do that by expanding these guys, and you'll get A delta N plus two B delta two B N naught delta N plus three c n naught squared delta n and so uh, actually this this is our total abc recombination and so our delta a r abc recombination this is just this term here uh, and it's linearized so it's now just in terms of delta n but it's a little ugly uh, so it's we we would like to clean this up a little bit because i don't want to be dragging around n naughts delta n a's uh, this is this is all hideous. Uh, I should also make the comment that we can similarly argue as we did in the last video that since we're well above uh, the threshold current, our n naught is just going to be approximately our threshold carrier density. So if you wanted to actually calculate this recombination rate, you could uh, if you wanted to. Um, so how do we how do we go about making this less ugly? Well, recombination. Uh, this should have units of per volume or per cubic centimeter per second, so per time. Uh, and our carrier density, delta n, is in units of per unit volume. So our recombination rate uh, is really 
it's some carrier density, or it's got the units of some carrier density divided by some time constant tau. And so A has units of one over time, uh, B should have units of one over uh, volume times, or volume divided by time, and so on and so on. But this whole term, uh, we can just lump all of these coefficients together so we can uh, factor everything out. So delta n a plus 2b n naught plus 3c n naught squared. And we can call this whole thing uh, 1 over tau n or 1 over some time constant. And we can calculate that time constant uh, because we can calculate the carrier density. And we're generally given a, b, and c. Or if we're, if we're awesome physicists, we could figure those out ourselves. So our delta r a b c recombination, we can just write as delta n divided by tau n. And that's much prettier than dragging around all of these, uh, all these coefficients. But that's the only reason we're doing it. Uh, this is, uh, this is just makes our life much easier. It's also kind of, uh, kind of cool because we can interpret this as the time constant or the relaxation constant for carriers. So if we add a certain number of carriers, they're going to decay after a certain time period. And that time constant is given by this tau n. Now, when we have to worry about other stuff like stimulated emission and current, things get a little more complicated. But if this was all we had to deal with, that would be the picture. And so now we can plug this in back up here. So instead of delta R A B C, uh, we'll just say delta N over tau N. And we know what tau N is now. We can calculate it. Uh, and let's turn this derivative, this time derivative, into a j omega. Uh, so we're interested in the frequency response. Because I know uh, the functional form of delta N. It's got an e to the j omega t in it. So I know what happens when I take a derivative. And so now we're finally ready to solve the whole thing. So we know what delta n of omega is as a function of delta n p of omega, strictly speaking. And uh, we calculated in the previous video uh, an expression for delta rst. That was just uh, our group velocity times our confinement factor times uh, this g prime uh, coefficient, which we can calculate, delta n times n p naught. Uh, plus g naught, which uh, we also said was just the threshold gain, times our change in number of photons. And then we have to derive, divide this whole thing by the active region volume. And so these two results were from the previous video. And so we can plug this guy in here, uh, and we can plug this guy in here and here. Now, what you get if you actually plug everything in and go through the reasonably miserable algebra, um, and then you make the substitution that we know the output power uh, as a function of omega is just our number of photons uh, divided by tau p times h bar omega. That's just the number of photons leaving the cavity per unit time multiplied by the energy per photon. Uh, and you make that substitution and you'll get, you can get the final transfer function so our output power divided by our input current, uh, this is just equal to uh, eta i, which is our injection efficiency, times our photon energy divided by the charge. Uh, and then all of our interesting stuff. So I'm going to write it in a normalized form. So when as omega approaches 0, this whole term on the right-hand side should approach 1. Uh, and if you do that, you'll get that it's just equal to 1 over 1 plus j omega over omega naught times omega naught tau p plus 1 over omega naught tau n uh, plus, or actually minus, uh, minus omega squared over omega naught squared. And here, omega naught uh, was just, you could find this by f identifying the term uh, that went with your omega squared term. Uh, but omega naught squared is just our group velocity times our differential gain times our confinement factor uh, multiplied by the number of photons we have in the cavity, all divided by the active region volume times our photon lifetime tau p. And this should be our DC number of photons, NP naught. So our photon lifetime, 
uh, group velocity of our photons, differential gain, uh, confinement factor, number of photons, active region volume. Whew, that's kind of a lot. Uh, but we don't really need to care about all this because this term right here, this is nothing but a second order system. And we analyze these to death in electrical engineering, uh, but we can figure out uh, all, as long as we know what omega naught is, what our um, uh, what our resonant frequency is, as well as zeta as it's generally expressed or damping factor, uh, and that's given by the term in right here. Uh, this term is just two zeta, so uh, zeta is our damping factor, and so we know a resonant frequency. We know what zeta is. Uh, we can actually plot the frequency response, uh, the general frequency response for any zeta and any omega naught. So in the next couple of videos, we're going to explore this in more detail, both in the low frequency, so when omega is much greater than omega naught, and the high frequency, when omega is much greater than omega naught, limits. Uh, and we're going to figure out how to engineer uh, a laser, given what given this frequency response that we now know. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.